Okay, a few quick hitting cases. So our second case is a um, miniature poodle on phenobarbital, persistent hyperlipemia, T4 values, free T4 is low, and TSH is high. So what's so what's your diagnosis? Here are those results. Our options include is this primary hypothyroidism? Do we need more lab data? Uh, is it borderline? Or is this a result of illness or drugs? Now, indeed, the animal was on phenobarb, but um, the answer would be this is A. Uh, the animal's got a low free T4 and an elevated TSH. And uh, actually, it turns out the phenobarbital administration doesn't normally elevate TSH that much. So I think you'd be fairly comfortable in saying this animal, uh, although it's on anti-epileptic treatment, phenobarb specifically, is a primary hypothyroid patient. It's got that clinical change, clinical diagnostic change of a low produc production of T4 or free T4 and high TSH. So our next case, this is a 10-year-old male castrated Doberman. He had symmetrical alopecia, crusts, hyperkeratosis, hyperpigmentation, scales, seborrhea, pyoderma, and pruritus. So his thyroid diagnostic tests include a, a lowish total T4, a free T4 in the normal range, a TSH that's in the normal range, and a T3 that's uh, slightly low. So what would be your recommendation here? Well, this animal, being 10 years old, is you got to first look at the signalment. It's a little old for hypothyroidism, but you might want to monitor the thyroid function tests in this animal because it could be one of those 25% of dogs or more that have a normal TSH. So I don't think I'd treat right now, but I'd probably monitor further. Okay, the next case is a nine-year-old female spayed lab, has lost weight recently, uh, is underweight, cachectic. Uh, senior blood work was performed, and the only abnormality was that it had a low total T4. So they did it again. They did a panel, and while the T4 wasn't the same, it was, it was still in the low normal range. T3 was low. Free T4 was in the normal range, and TSH is in the normal range. So would you treat this dog? And the answer is, yeah, I'd give it food. Basically, the low T3 is a sort of a hint here that the animal could be suffering from protein calorie malnutrition, a form of non-thyroidal illness, where we know conversion of T4 to T3 is reduced. So this animal is not hypothyroid, but probably uh, in need of some good, good feeding. Our final case is, is a complex one. I will admit it up front but it's an interesting one. And this is a two-year-old male Doberman named Luca. His history uh, is that his owner complained about alopecia over the dorsum and the flanks. He had uh, normal activity, but at one point he had an increased activity or excitability. They found there was no weight gain and he had successfully sired several litters. On physical exam, he was bright, active, and alert had bilateral, bilateral symmetrical alopecia, characterized by thinning of the hair coat and mottled appearance. No other physical abnormalities. Clinical lab, CBCs, no abnormality. Serum chemistries, maybe a slight elevation. Urinalysis, uh, no abnormalities. Okay. Plan was to do skin scrapings, which were negative. Skin biopsy, which the dermatologist said this was a blue Doberman, so it's not consistent with endocrine alopecia. And to do a total T4, TSH, and free T4, and possibly a thyroid scan if you can't sort things out. So the diagnostic tests, wow, came back as really high total T4. TSH, though, was, was elevated? How can that be? Free T4 by dialysis showed that it's low. So this is inconsistent with total T4. And 
this turned us to thinking about antibodies. And so we measured anti-thyroglobulin antibodies, which are positive, anti-T4 antibodies that were positive, and anti-T3 antibodies that were positive. So, if you remember, total T4 and total T3 and non-dialysis uh, free T4 measurements are not valid in the presence of these antibodies. And it varies from one lab to another, whether you get an elevated value or you get a low value. Technetium scans showed both thyroid lobes to be visible. Um, both were moderately enlarged, uh, but of equal size, and slightly higher uptake um, in, than the salivary glands. And this was consistent with a form of hyperthyroidism, hyperfunction. And this is tricky. This is, this is not an easy one. So is your diagnosis primary hypothyroidism, primary hyperthyroidism, euthyroidism, borderline or uninterpretable? That's an easy one to pick. Um, lab data doesn't fit clinical picture, probably the case, or results might be due to effects of other illness or drugs. Um, and so, uh, but let's let the diagnostic test give us the answer here. Um, follow up on LUCA, unfortunately no thyroid biopsy was done at that time, but the, and the dog was, uh, there was no treatment pursued and he was lost to follow up for two years, we basically found out information after that he died suddenly, uh, no obvious cause of death, but he, they noted autoimmune thyroiditis in this case. So what happened? So we think he presented initially with active thyroiditis, that is a history of hyperactivity where the gland was producing and releasing thyroid hormone, making him nervous, etc. He developed anti-thyroglobulin, anti-T4, anti anti-T3 antibodies, and therefore, all of the that led to meaningless values for T4, T3, and free T4. The diagnosis of primary hypothyroidism and thyroiditis could be made, though, because of a low free T4 by dialysis, high TSH, and positive antithyroglobulin autoantibodies. The time course of thyroiditis uh, can be quite variable, and this is a great example of that where it took a couple of years for him go through the cycle and eventually lead to complete destruction of the thyroid gland. So in summary, the definitive diagnosis of hypothyroidism, when we use T4, we say if T4 is normal, then, and then we can rule out with 90% sensitivity hypothyroidism. If you also remove out uh, and show that the animal does not have T4 autoantibodies, you can make that almost a 100% a sensitivity. T3 is generally a poor diagnostic test for hypothyroidism. TSH can be a poor screening test too, but has high value when added uh, and adds specificity for the disease when a low T4 or free T4 is measured concurrently. Uh, free T4 has a high sensitivity, specificity, and should be considered when you have non-thyroidal illness, interfering drugs, or the presence of anti-T4 autoantibodies. And the presence of thyroglobulin autoantibody is an early indicator of possible thyroid pathology. It doesn't mean that the animal is hypothyroid. Scintigraphy is currently being explored where available as a gold standard for diagnosis. What about treatment and monitoring? Well, T4 is the, LT4 is the preferred treatment. Once a day dosing works for most animals. And the clinical response is key. It's also diagnostic. Um, you should see a clinical response to an appropriate dosage, assuming the animal is keeping it down. If you're going to do laboratory monitoring, make sure you do it after steady states achieved uh, and probably after a month. T4 at three hours post pill can be used to evaluate absorption uh, and or measuring it just before the next pill to look at the lowest value during the day. If initially elevated, you can measure TSH. At, if appropriate therapy is being given on uh, an animal had an elevated TSH, you should have an undetectable TSH um, if successful treatment has occurred. So this is good enough to establish 
enough therapy, but does not help you diagnose if the therapy is excessive. You'll have to go based on clinical signs there. So I hope uh, this has helped you uh, understand the full gamut of diagnosis of hypothyroidism from screening tests to confirmation tests and finally to treatment.